What is up guys, Random William here with your week 8 fantasy LCS predictions. In this video I'm going to break down all of the matchups for NA and EU LCS. Uh, but first off, I wanted to just briefly talk about uh, the status of the channel. Uh, I plan on doing these videos pretty much for forever. I don't plan on stopping them anytime soon. But I did also want to make other videos. Uh, but I only have a little bit of extra time to make other videos. So I was looking for your guys' help. Uh, and the way you guys can help me is just go onto my channel and check out some of the other video series that I've done in the past and let me know which ones you actually enjoy. So that way I know where to focus my efforts because I don't want to spend time making videos that people don't enjoy. Um, and I am also doing a lot more solo queue games. Uh, so that is something new that I could possibly do if you guys are interested in that. I could upload my solo queue games. Uh, there wouldn't be that much commentary because I'll be focusing on winning. Um, but you guys can watch those either for entertainment or educational value. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, uh, just let me know. Just leave a comment on uh, what you want to see in the future, what you enjoy watching. So that way I know what my uh, customers want. Um, but let's get into uh, what happened last week in week seven. So what we saw uh, for week seven, I think it went just about as well as I could have predicted for a brand new system. Uh, there still are obviously a few kinks that I need to work out. Um, but I found out that when I accurately predicted who was going to win and who was going to lose, uh, most of the time I was uh, really accurate on point values. Uh, and we saw that a lot with EU. The EU was a very predictable week seven. You had a lot of top ranked teams going up against a lot of bottom ranked teams. And that made for a very predictable week. And I had a very high success rate. Uh, I think over half of the players and teams, I was within a couple points of their, their actual value. Um, but then when we saw for NA, where there was a lot more upsets, a lot more unpredictability, uh, I didn't do as well. So that's something that I still need to work on a little bit more. So I think the system is a pretty good system, but it still needs refinement. So hopefully I can, I can refine that system, make a better system in the future. And uh, I definitely look forward to your guys' feedback to assist me with that. Um, but yeah, let's get into the actual week eight predictions. So uh, as before for week seven, we've got our standard S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, and D tier teams. Um, and basically what this means is that if you've got like a B tier and an A tier uh, team or player, I'm not saying that the A tier team or player is better than the B team tier or player. I'm saying that the A tier team is going to get more fantasy points this week than the B tier team. And that's who you should start. Um, so that's how I'm just breaking it down. It's not based on ability level. It's based on really how many fancy points they're going to get. And then I've also added uh, something extra this week. If you look right after the name for either the team or the player, um, you'll see two letters. Uh, the first letter is what I said that they were going to be last week and what they actually were last week. So for example, Immortals, I said that they were going to be an S tier team last week. But of course, we all know that they lost one of their games uh, and they actually were only a B tier team last week. Uh, so that'll give you an idea of how accurately I predicted that team or that player's performance in the previous week. So uh, this week, my S tier teams are going to be Immortals, Vitality, TSM, and CLG. Uh, Immortals definitely kind of had a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, last week, but I think that this week they're going to go back to their winning ways. They're going to go 2-0. They'll be back near the top of the fantasy points. Uh, and, you know, everything will be as it was uh, before they lost to CLG. And then Vitality. I think Vitality is going to get a lot of fantasy points this week because they're going up against G2. And it's going to be a very, very close game. But I think Vitality is going to win. And then I think that they're also going to have a pretty good game with Fnatic. Uh, that they're also going to win. And that's going to mean a lot of fantasy points for Vitality. Uh, TSM, I think, is going to rebound pretty strong uh, this week. They've got a much easier week. And I think you're going to see them get a lot more fantasy points than they've gotten in, in the past two weeks. And then CLG has been looking really good. Been putting up a lot of good points. So, uh, yeah, I think they're going to have another very strong 2 a week. And then as far as the A-tier teams, I've got Unicorns of Love, H2K, and Cloud9. Uh, Unicorns of Love also had kind of some setbacks uh, last week, some upsets. Uh, I think that they will 
uh, return to their winning ways this week. Uh, but I think that they're going to be just uh, slightly out of contention for S tier. So they're the they're the top A tier team, um, but they will get less points than the S tier team. And then for H2K uh, and Cloud9, both of those teams have historically not been putting up as many points as you would expect based on player performance and player fantasy points. Um, but I think that this week they're going to be about an A tier team. Um, and then moving on to the B tier, I've got G2, Liquid, and Origin. So G2 a lot of times is an S tier team. But uh, this week they're going up against Vitality, and I think they're going to lose that game. Uh, and then they're going to go up against Giants, and I think they're going to blow out Giants. So both of those games are gonna, not going to result in as many points uh, as we've seen in previous weeks. Uh, Liquid has a much harder schedule this week, so I don't think they are going to get as many points this week. And then Origin has kind of been struggling. They've been kind of that middle of the pack. Uh, and I think they're going to continue to be that middle of the pack. But they're they're kind of riding that list between a B-tier and a C-tier uh, team as far as points are concerned. Uh, moving on to C-tier, we've got Fnatic, Echo Fox, Elements, Energy, and Rocket. Uh, I think the big ones that I want to talk about on that list are Echo Fox and Energy. I really don't know... Who's going to show up for Echo Fox or Energy? You've, we've seen both these teams look fantastic, and we've seen both these teams look horrible. Um, so they're they're very high risk. So yeah, you might get some you might get some great points with uh, Echo Fox and NRG, um, but you might just get nothing with them. So that's why I have them kind of in that C tier range because I really don't know how they're going to perform. Um, Echo Fox has one challenging matchup this week in CLG. I think they should be able to beat Dignitas, uh, but NRG has two really tough game matches this week. So I think they're going to go 0-2 and that's going to really hurt their uh, fantasy points. And then rounding out the rest of the teams for the D tier, I've got Giants, Splice, Dignitas, Impulse, and Renegades. I don't think there's any surprises uh, on that list. All these teams have uh, very challenging weeks. Okay, moving on to top lane for the S tier picks. I have Cabo Shard, Vivisachi, Kikis, and Huni. Uh, Cabo Shard and Vivisachi have uh, traditionally been S tier picks. Uh, Vivisachi and Unicorns of Love had kind of a setback last week. Uh, but I think they're going to uh, go back to what they were like uh, in week six and week five. Uh, Kickus has definitely been kind of in that S tier range for a while. I think that even though uh, G2 is going to go one and one, I think that he is deserving of an S tier pick. I think he will still get a lot of points. Um, and then Huni, I think he's going to do much better this week. Um, and he's going to be an S tier because Immortals are going up against Energy and Dig. I think they're going to come out kind of pissed off that they lost last week, and they're going to kind of make a statement out of both Energy and Dignitas. Uh, for A tier, I've got Odoame, Darshan, and Balls. Uh, Odoame and Darshan, I think, are pretty self-explanatory why they're in the A tier. Uh, Balls has been really improving. Uh, there's been a couple weeks where he's been very highly uh, ranked. Uh, and Cloud9 has been putting up a lot of points uh, recently, um, which is kind of unconventional because traditionally Cloud9 typically doesn't put up that many fantasy points. But I think that Rush has had like a really strong impact on that, and they're getting a lot more fantasy points. So I think that Balls is worthy of an A-tier uh, pick this week, especially since Cloud9 is going up against uh, not very stiff competition. So they, they should be able to win both games easily. Um, it's just a question of how many fantasy points they're going to be able to get out of both of those games. For B tier, I've got Soaz, Hanser, and Gamsu. Uh, I think Hanser is definitely a very talented player who can put up a lot of fantasy points. But the problem is, is that TSM is not devoting that many resources into him. And you've got Bjergsen and double lift on the team. You know, Hanser's just kind of left to fend for himself a lot of times. Um, so that's why he hasn't been getting as many fantasy points as I would expect. Uh, Soaz has also been kind of underperforming. Uh, he did have a pretty good week last week, um, but I'm, I'm not convinced that Origin is back and Origin's going to keep producing a lot of fantasy points. All right, for C tier, I've got Lorlo, Steve, KFO, Freddy, and Adam. Lorlo got a lot of fantasy points last week, but I think Liquid is going to struggle. So we've seen Liquid, when they, get, when they go 2-0 in a week, they get a ton of fantasy points. And then when they go one and one in a week, they're kind of kind of like B tier, C tier. Um, and I think that uh, Liquid's going to go one and one this week, which is why I have Lorlo at C tier. 
Um, but if you think that the liquid's going to beat CLG, then he's definitely more like an A tier or an S tier pickup, uh, just based off of historically how liquid has performed when they go 2 0 in a week. Uh, KFO, I think that he's just really hit or miss. I think he's very high risk right now. Um, so he, I mean, he could get a lot of points, but I'm, I'm not betting on it. Um, especially since they're going to be in CLG, I think they're going to struggle a lot with CLG. And then for D tier, I've got Impact, Wonderware, Billy Boss, Fang, and RF Legendary. I think people are going to ask why is Impact down in D tier? Uh, Impact's a great top laner, but energy is just not where they need to be. They've been having all sorts of problems, and then this week they've got Immortal and Team Liquid that they're going up against. I think they're going to get demolished in both of those games, and it's going to result in not that many fantasy points for anyone on the NRG team. All right, moving on to Jungle. Uh, for S tier, I've got Rainover, Rush, Shook, and Rudy. Um, I think, obviously, I think Immortals is going to bounce back. Rainover is going to go back to be an S tier pick. Uh, Shook and Rudy, I think, are pretty self-explanatory while they're why they are up there. Uh, I think they're both going to get a lot of fancy points. They're, both teams are going to go two and zero, uh, and they should be fine. Uh, and then Rush has been performing fantastic. Uh, he actually looks like he's really integrated into Cloud Nine now. He's really um, just a seamless addition to the team. You're seeing Cloud Nine being a lot more aggressive. They're playing off of Rush's aggression, and it's it's working wonders for them. Uh, and he's been just racking up the fancy points like crazy. So I definitely think that he has moved up to an, an S tier pick, uh, especially this week with Cloud9 having kind of an easier week. Uh, for A tier, I've got Yankos, X Smithy, and Sven Skarin. Uh Yankos and X Smithy, I think, are pretty self explanatory why they are A tier. Sven Skarin, he has been hit or miss. Uh, you saw like last week, he was kind of bottom of the barrel. Um, but when they put him on a carry and TSM has favorable matchups, he puts up a lot of fantasy points. And TSM does have an easier week uh, in week eight. So I think they're going to put him on a carry jungler and he's going to get a lot more fantasy points than he did in week seven. Uh, for B tier, I've got Trick, Spirit, and Dardosh. Um, so both Trick and Dardosh would normally be like S tier if their teams were going 2-0. But I think that both G2 and Liquid are going to go 1-1 one one this week, which is why they're getting dropped down to B tier. Um, if you disagree with me, if you think that G2 or Liquid are going to go 2-0, then you might want to prioritize uh, those uh, junglers more than maybe like an A tier or an S tier pick. All right, for C tier, I've got Amazing, Hard, Gilius, Airwalks, and Moon. Um, I don't think... That many people are going to have too many questions on this C tier. I think it, it makes pretty logical sense. Um, obviously, with NRG, they've just been struggling so much that I, I can't put anyone on NRG higher than like C tier um, just because they have such a, a really hard week uh, with Immortals and Team Liquid, and they've just been so inconsistent. Um, and then for D tier, I've got Kiri, Proxen, Bet and Jock, Trashy, and Crumbs. Uh, same usual suspects. They all have very challenging weeks. I think they're going to struggle, and they're not going to get as many fantasy points. All right, moving on to mid lane. You know, a lot of you guys will be happy that Jensen is at the top of my list. Uh, he's been just putting up an absurd amount of fantasy points the past two weeks, and uh, I cannot, I cannot put anyone higher than him. If you if you put up super high fantasy points two weeks in a row even when your team goes one and one in one of those weeks you, you got to be put at the top of the list so jensen's at the top at the s tier and then we've got fox po belter and who um who i all think are pretty self-explanatory uh immortals will be back at 2-0 again back at the top of the, the list and then uh unicorns of love will also rebound and they'll go 2-0 this week and get a lot more points and then uh who he has been doing a lot better he's been doing a really good job carrying his team uh, when they need him to carry. For A tier, I've got Ryu, Nuke Duck, and Bjergsen. Um, Ryu and Nuke Duck have, have traditionally been around that A tier level. And then Bjergsen has been kind of hit or miss with TSM, but TSM I think is going to rebound really strongly uh, this week, and they're going to go 2-0 this week, and they should get a lot more fantasy points. For B tier, I've got uh, Febbin, Phoenix, and Perks. Like I said, with the junglers, same thing with Phoenix and Perks for Liquid and G2. They're normally kind of S tier, but because I think they're going to go one and one this week, they've dropped down. Uh, and if you disagree with me, then start them anyway. 
All right, for C tier, I've got Power of Evil, Frog, and Ica, Betsy, and GBM. Um, Power of Evil had a fantastic week last week. However, I'm not sold that he's going to have the same uh, level of fantasy points this week. I, I try not to adjust um, fantasy points based off of just one week of performance. And if you look at like the entire split, Power of Evil has, has been performing more at like the, the C tier. Uh, so that's why I have him at C tier rather than higher than that. And then for Froggen, he's been kind of hit or miss. He's done fantastic. He's also done poorly. Um, and then GBM, the same thing could be said. Energy is a very difficult week. Uh, and then for D tier, I've got X Pepe, Shifter, Senkux, Alex Hitch, and Pyrene. Uh, I don't think anybody will be surprised by that list. All right, moving on to AD Kiri. And another, I know you guys will be so surprised and happy that I also have Sneaky at the top of the list. So both Jensen and Sneaky have been racking up just an absurd amount of fantasy points uh, for Cloud9. So that's why I have him on top. And then the rest of the S tier picks are Steelback, Double Lift, and Wild Turtle. Uh, like I've previously discussed, I think Unicorns of Love and Immortals are going to bounce back very strongly. And I think TSM is going to have a very strong 2 0 week. And uh, Double Lift is going to rack up a lot of points. For A tier, I've got Hijarnan, Forgiven, and Emperor. Uh, I do think H2K is going to go 2 0 this week. But Forgiven has not put up that many points. Traditionally, Forgiven is more about the win as opposed to getting a lot of kills. Uh, and Forgiven is just such a good player that he allows his team to devote more resources to other players and he still gets ahead. So uh, just traditionally, Forgiven doesn't get that many fantasy points. There's been one or two weeks where he's done really well, but for the most part, he's been kind of more like the A tier or the B tier, even though H2K is one of the top teams in Europe. And then Emperor is normally an S tier pickup, um, but I think he's going to be more of a of an A tier this week because I think they're going to go one and one uh, rather than two and zero. Oh. For B tier, I've got uh, Reckles, Piglet, and Stixe. I do think CLG is going to go two and zero oh this week, um, but Stixe has not been getting that many fantasy points. His team has really been more about Huyi and Darshan. It hasn't really been th about that much about Stixe. Uh, so that's why I think that he's going to only be kind of um, B tier. And then Piglet, a lot of times he puts up a lot of points, but I do think that uh, Liquid is going to struggle this week. So that's why I have him at B tier. Okay, for C tier, I got Zven, Keith, Mr. Rallis, Adri, and Tabs. Um, I don't think that anybody's going to have any questions on this list, except maybe Zven. He did have a better week in week seven. Um, but I do think that you or that Origin's going to go one and one uh, this week, which is going to put him back more in the C tier range. And then uh, for D tier, I've got Altec, uh, Kabi, Apollo, Freeze, and Mash. So Altec's kind of a question mark. He didn't play last week. It was Laud who played, and I know that definitely hurt NRG, and they went 0 and 2 last week. Uh, but this week, even if he does come back, I think he's going to really struggle because they're going up against Immortals and Team Liquid. So I got to put him pretty low on the list all right and then finally we've got support uh so for s tier for support i've got hilla saying adrian high and vander yet another cloud nine player who's getting into the s tier high has been putting up a ton of fantasy points the past couple weeks uh so yeah i have to put him up there i mean he just keeps performing really well so he's definitely worthy of an s tier pick and then I think that the uh, the other three supports on that list are pretty self-explanatory. Um, yeah, Unicorns of Love and Immortals are going to go 2-0 this week. Same with H2K. Uh, and then for A tier, we've got Hybrid, Kasing, and Aphromoo. Uh Yet again, I don't think that anyone's going to be surprised by who's in the A tier. Uh, I do think G2 is going to go 1-1. Uh, and one, And I do think that Vitality is going to go 1-1, one one, uh, which is why they're not more like an S tier pickup. And then for B tier, I've got Matt, Yellow Star, and Mithy. Matt has been putting up a ton of fantasy points. I think he was the the leader last week as far as fantasy points are concerned. But like I said, with the other um, players, Liquid is going to struggle more, and that's going to drop him down. All right, moving on to C tier, I have Clash, Extinct, Spraddle, Big, and Kiwi Kid. 
Uh, I don't think that anybody's going to have any questions on this on these players. Most of these players have been kind of C tier. Occasionally they'll they'll go up to B tier or they'll drop down to D tier, but I think they're kind of pretty solid C tier players. Uh, and then for D tier, I've got Godfrey, Nisbeth, Akuo, Gate, and Conquan. I think the only one that people are going to kind of uh, scratch their head at is Conquan, and it kind of looks like I'm throwing energy under the bus, and I kind of am. Uh, because they just looked really bad last week, and they've got an incredibly difficult week uh, in Week 8 with Immortals and Team Liquid, so I don't think that energies can get that many points this week. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on the channel, please subscribe. Uh, and if you want to help me out, please check out some more of my video series and just let me know uh, what you want me to do more videos of in the future. Um, and definitely if you've got a comment, if you think I, I got something wrong or you agree with something I got to say, or if there's anything that you guys want to say to try and, uh, improve the channel, you know, please leave a comment. I read all of them. I'll try to respond back to as many as I can. Uh, but I hope you guys have a great day. This is Randomonium signing off.